same greeting for me, will you? We close tomorrow night. I've got to drive a hundred miles and into another city, and and I won't be able to go get to Moose Jaw to see him. But if you know it, where the church is, greet him. As some of you here from Moose Jaw, how many times have we passed through this city and I'd see him weep, sitting down there in that big hotel up by the river, down there with me, ladies, big head over on my shoulder and cried and said, Billy, how many times I've seen, just see myself as a little red-headed boy up and down these streets packing newspapers. Ern went through a lot of things and he's a fine Christian gentleman. If anybody knows my old friend, Brother Dawson, down around Moose Jaw there, greet him for me too. I was in hopes he'd get to the meeting, but I suppose he didn't. I'd like to see him. My son was just telling me that they'd taken a, a love offering for me a while ago. Well, they didn't really have to do that. But I know some of you put in little potions of your living. I appreciate it. And brother, sister, to the best of my knowledge, I'll spend every penny of it that I can to the glory of God. Now, I send out thousands of handkerchiefs a week around the world. I got an office with three or four people working in it, constantly the stenographer and things, how they're paid pretty good. I've got a wife and three children. I, I, I'm preaching all the time, so I, that's why I have to live by that. And I certainly promise you that it won't be spent for tobaccos and whiskey and rowdiest living. It'll be to the best of my knowledge to the glory of God. Paul, I know it's part of your living. I'm sorry. I never taken an offering in my life. I preached in the Baptist church for 12 years and never took one offering. One night I run short, as all people do. Many of you know when you get to that place you can't make, make ends meet. Now don't you be honest, sure. You're just like I am. We're just all poor folks, as we say down in the South. I just couldn't make the ends meet. I said to my wife, I'm going over and take up an offering. She said, I'm going to go over and watch you do it. We didn't even have a collection plate. Now, not if the people wouldn't do it. Oh, them dear people would give anything that all they had for to me. But I, I wouldn't do it. I could work. And I was a game warden. And I, I worked and never made... I was on the warden force for seven years and never made one rest. I believe I could talk to them, make a better conservationist out of them. I could find them and make them pay for it. Then they'd try to get even with them. They never fired me. I just had the this meetings, this evangelistic reason I quit. Very nice to me. If I could catch a fellow, I'd sit down and talk to him like a brother. I'd say, promise me that you never do that again. You promise to keep his word too. A whole lot better would make him pay a fine. Then I said, wife, I'm going to take an offering. She said, I want to watch you. So I said, folks, tonight I have a, a little need. I, I need just a little money, just about five dollars. I owe a little bills and I can't make a meet. I'm going to pass a hat and some of you then give a nickel or two. I said, it'll, it'll help me make it. I know you won't mind. I said, Uncle Jim, would you go get my hat? He said, yes, Billy. He walked over to get the hat, everybody. This little old woman sitting down there used to pray for me all the time. Little old godly looking woman. Do you ever, some of you women ever remember when the women used to wear aprons and long aprons, check it, had a pocket on the inside? Well, that's the kind of apron she had on and she reached down on the inside of this pocket. I was watching her. She pulled out one of these little pocket books that's got a snap on top of it. And she went to reaching in there for those nickels. I couldn't stand it no more. I said, I was just teasing you all. I didn't mean that. Uncle Jim had my hat. He didn't know what to do. I said, oh, Uncle Jim, put my hat up. I was just teasing you. I didn't mean it. You know, there used to be an old guy come down to my place from up at Benton Harbor, had long whiskers, long hair. His name was John Ryan. He left an old bicycle there and gave it to me. And I went to the 10-cent store and got a can of paint and painted up and sold the bicycle for $5. Didn't have to take up offering anyhow. But that's the closest I ever come to one by doing that. So money has been a very one thing that I've tried to keep away. The reason I wouldn't make let my ministry get out in the great big fields because 
You have to ask too much for money. I don't like that. I'd just rather be just this way. So thank you, friends. God bless each one of you, and I'm sure God will repay you. I trust that he will. Now, just before opening the word now, let us bow our heads to we talk to the author just a moment. Now, dear Jesus, we're going to turn back the pages of thy blessed holy word. Won't you speak to us just a little while to encourage us to have faith for the service of prayer for the sick that we're trying to render tonight in thy blessed holy name. No doubt, but there's many churches here in Saskatchewan has dismissed their service tonight so that their dear children of yours that comes to their dwelling could come to the meeting to be prayed for. We thank you for these gallant soldiers. And there's many who did not maybe get the message in time to dismiss. We pray for them, God, that you'll give them great service tonight, everywhere, throughout all the provinces around the world, that many might find Christ tonight. And everywhere they're having a healing service, we pray that you'll stretch forth your great hand of blessings over them meetings and heal every sick person that comes, Lord. Anoint your servants. Give them words to speak that would just, just glorify Christ and get the people to believe him. Do likewise to us, Father, for we are waiting on thee as we read thy word. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Tomorrow night now, 7.30 or 7 o'clock, the prayer cards, and we're closing this service, trying with these two nights to pray for every person that wants to be prayed for. Now, by the grace of God, just to speak a little bit, I do not wish to take too much time because I have already preached this afternoon, and now I'll speak just for a little while tonight, merely just to get the people's feeling and the presence of the Holy Spirit in the meeting. And then we'll start praying for the sick. Now I'm going to read tonight one verse of scripture, very familiar to the smallest child here that ever attended Sunday school, called the, the golden text of the Bible, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You say, Brother Branham, would you read such a little text for a great service? You see, it doesn't make much difference how small it is. It's what it says. It's the contents in it, the context, what makes it so valuable. That is enough scripture to convert the entire world to God and to Christ tonight. If it be received in the right mental attitude, it would do it, it would bring every sinner to his knees. And the reason I chose this tonight is because my theme has always been love. I think love is the most powerful force that the world has because God is love. And there's no more, power, more powerful force than God. And love is one of the greatest things that I could speak of. So it is written in a little small text, perhaps one inch square, would more than cover the text. But as I said, it doesn't go in quantity, it's in quality. Here some time ago, I was reading where a little boy up in an old garret attic was searching around up there in some old relics. 
and he run on to a little postage stamp, perhaps one half inch square. Well, the little fella thought this must be of some value. So he rushes down the street to a man that he knew was a stamp collector. And he said, how much would you give me for this stamp? Said, it looks like an old stamp. And the man said, well, I do not know the value of it, Sonny, but I'll give you a dollar for it. He said, all right, I'll sell it to you. So he bought it for one dollar. A few weeks later, he sold it for fifty dollars. A few weeks after that, it was sold for five hundred dollars. And the last I heard of the stamp, it was worth a quarter of a million dollars. Now, it isn't the size, neither is it the paper. It's what's on it that counts. This text, it isn't how small it is, it's the message to the people that counts. It's God's word of pardon and grace to Adam's dying race. It is a love letter that God has given to every fallen man and woman of Adam's race. Now, it's a pardon to those who will receive it as a pardon. But if you do not wish to receive it, it's nothing to you. It was tried in the courts a few years ago in the U.S. that a man had committed a crime. And it was a, a military offense. And he was going to be shot at sunrise. And some friend begged the officials until they persuaded them to that the man be pardoned and give another chance. And when the pardon was wrote out and sent to the man which was in prison, just a few lines from the governor or the official said, this man is pardoned and wrote just his name, pardoned so-and-so. And when it was given to the man, he refused to accept it. He said, it's not enough writing on that to pardon me. And he turned it down. And the next morning, the man was shot at sunrise. And then when this pardon being officially returned back to the government, here's a man that was pardoned by the governor, and the man that was pardoned is shot. Now what about it? And they tried it in the federal courts. And the verdict was passed by the federal judge that a pardon is not a pardon if it isn't ex accepted as a pardon. John 3.16 is a pardon if you will accept it as a pardon. James 5.14 is a divine remedy for your sickness if you will accept it as God's remedy. John 3.16 is a pardon for your sin. But if you will not accept it, then it returns back to God and it is not a pardon to you. If you cannot accept your healing, then it's not healing for you. Someone said not long ago to me, Said, Mr. Branham, I don't care how many blind eyes will come open, how many deaf sees. Said, I do not believe it's so. I said, it wasn't written for you. Divine healing promise was only written to believers, and you're an unbeliever. It's only for those who believe. Salvation is for those who believe. 
And when God looked down upon Adam's fallen race, and he so loved the race of Adam, he seen their condition, and it so constrained him to love. And when love begins to go out, and when divine love has been projected and come to its end, sovereign grace will project the object that divine love calls for. That's the reason God had to do something about the sin case, for He so loved Adam's race, and His divine love went out. Sovereign grace sent a savior, and when man lay sick and afflicted, and in the condition that they're in, the love of God had to produce something for them. God doesn't want you to be sick, and when anybody teaches you that it's God's will for you to be sick. Then, if it's God's will for you to be sick, Jesus defied every law of God when He healed the sick that was brought to Him. He did what the Father told Him not to do. Just might as well face the issue. It's lack of faith is what's the matter with us. All things are possible to them that can believe, and this is God's pardon. Now, there's something about a man. That's a part of God. He's a fallen race. He's a fallen son. And now, in one sense of the word, a man in himself is a creator, miniature creator. Now he cannot actually create because God does that. But he can take the things that God has made. And the wood that God grows and build a building out of it. He can take that the steel that God created and do something else with it. He can take the electricity that God sends in the air and make it light up a building. That's a man. Now I want to ask you something. Let's let our collars down just a minute. Did you ever see a person that's a good person? You think they're nice? But there's just something about the person you just don't like to be around them. Certainly you do. And then you've seen people that you just love to be around. What is it? It's that creative power that's up on the people that create an atmosphere around where they're at. If they're full of love. Not make believe, but real love. You can feel it. You know that they're Christians. They shake your hands. Say, "I'm your friend, John." You can feel it. You might not agree with me, but I'm thinking of my friend Paul Rader. Now I believe in heartfelt religion. I notice tonight we have some colored friends with us, and an old colored man said once down in the south, his boss said there is no such a thing as heartfelt religion. He said just one thing you like, boss, and saying there's no such a thing as heartfelt religion as far as you know. He know different, and I believe in heartfelt religion. I believe that you feel it. That God gives you something inside of you that changes you. It makes the atmosphere around you different. I've tried that. I know it's the truth. That man create in himself the atmosphere that he lives in, and around him he's anointed with the Spirit. I've seen people that you just couldn't get away from him. He just loved him. There's something drawing about them. It's because they live in that atmosphere. They live under the, the power of the Holy Spirit. My poor old half Indian mother 
used to tell me this, birds of a feather flock together. And that's true. You don't see crows and doves having any fellowship together because they're two different species. They don't look alike. Their diet is not alike. A crow can sit over on a dead carcass and eat all day. But the dove cannot eat out of that carcass because he doesn't have any gall. If you take a bill full of that carcass over there, it would kill him. There's no gall in him to digest it. And he's a different bird. Therefore, he don't associate with the crow. That's the way it is when a man becomes born again. There's something takes place within him. That he's sick and tired of the world. And there's godly spirit around him. But my life has been dealing with spiritual things, as you understand in the meeting. You walk up to people sometimes that try to impersonate something. Oh, Brother Bam, I sure got faith in you, and you know he's lying. See? There's a spirit there that speaks a lot louder than his lips speak. It's the atmosphere. And if you learn to love and to be kind to everybody and to be gentle, have patience, it'll even make your home life different. It'll make your associations different. God will honor you. Now, I've tried it. Here some time ago in my home, you can imagine what kind of a turmoil it's in all the time. You just think, well, the people say like here, this little city. What about the people from around the world? See? And they're flying and coming in, calling in. All the time, hotels, motels, setting full of people, crying, begging, you can't get a minute's rest. One day our house has been completely torn up all day long. The basement has been full, every room full, the den room full. Along about dark, I got them kind of quieting down, everybody away, I thought. And I went into the kitchen. There stood my poor little wife at 37 years old, completely gray-headed, holding her hands up, crying. She said, Billy, I'm just about to lose my mind. She said, these children hasn't had a bite to eat all day long. Had some nervous people there in mental cases and some of them walking up another floor telling me that the Lord is going to strike me dead if I didn't go to a certain town because they said so and that's you have to cut it all together. Another one in another room saying, oh, he don't know what he's talking about. I got thus saith the Lord. If the Lord won't mean to know anything, you tell me. He's not afraid to talk to me. And then, but you have to put up with that sometimes. And she said, I don't know what to do. Well, I look, there sat Sarah and Becca in the floor, fussing over some little blocks, little bitty building blocks. Sarah screaming to the top of her voice, Daddy, Sarah, Becky's got my block. Daddy, she took my pocketbook a while ago. All right. Joseph sitting in the floor, beating on something as hard as he could, the little boy screaming to the top of his voice. Now you talk about home, sweet home. <laughs> well, I looked around. I thought, now there's just one thing to do. we got to change this situation. Now those people there through the day, so many and all through the night, does disturb the children. But I want to be with them a little while. So I thought, Lord, now you help me in my heart and let me, I'm just letting down to talk to you from the bottom of my heart tonight. Now some things that you don't have to tell everybody. So uh, I said, Lord, you help me now to get upon me the Holy Spirit in such a way that will change this situation. So, praying to myself, I put my arm around my little wife and I said, Oh, sweetheart, I really feel sorry for you. She said, Billy, I, I don't believe I can hold out any longer. She said, Oh, I'm just going to pieces. Just look at this house. I said, Yes, that's right, honey. That's exactly right. I put my hand around her. I said, I know it, sweetheart. I thought, Lord, you quieten her. 
And I said, now, that's true. But you know, honey, the other day when I was in Louisville, I seen one of those pretty little, um, what is them things that women wear, you know, it's a little, like a little shirt up, the, what is it you call them? What? Bla- blouse. And um, I said, I, I saw one of the prettiest ones someplace. Let's see, where was it? She said, but Billy, no time to talk about blouses. I kept my hand on her. Now, honey, I tell you, you've never seen such a pretty blouse. And she said, well, I said, look, i tell you what let's do. Let's get supper right quick. And when we do, I'll take and show it to you. I'll buy it for you. Oh, she said, that's nice of you, Billy, but oh, I, I couldn't look at a blouse tonight. Oh, just look at me. I said, but look, honey, oh, if you'd ever see it, I believe it, you, you, you'd want to buy it. Lord, quieten her, see, holding my hand on her. And I said, I'll tell you what, you put me on your apron, let me help you get supper. And so I put this apron on, you know, I'm going to chop up some carrots and things, you know, and going on. And every once in a while, I'd walk over, she'd begin to quit crying. I thought, thank you, Lord. And I said, oh, honey, isn't the Lord wonderful? He's just so good. See, kept talking to her, changing that atmosphere, laying my hand on her. As soon as I got her quiet, after a while, she was all smiled. She said, well, Billy, do you think the stores will be on? I said, I'm pretty sure they will be. And I said, I, I think they will be. I don't thank you, Lord. It's working. So just kept on. And the first thing you know, Sarah and Becky divided up their blocks and Joseph got him a little rattler. And there was peace in the home. See? Now the only thing you have to change the situation. If that can be done in a home, it can be done in a church, it can be done in a nation, it can be done in the whole world. It's the atmosphere that counts. The natural way to hatch an egg is put it under a hen because she keeps it warm. But put it under the same kind of a heat and it'll hatch anyhow. It's the atmosphere that counts. That's right. So it's the atmosphere. And you make up that atmosphere with what you are inside of you. Let's just break down a little further. How many ever read my book? I believe it was wrote by Gordon Lindsay called Man Sent from God. Many of you. Did you ever read of that case when I was up at Portland, Oregon, and there was a maniac run out to the platform that night to kill me? you read that? About one-third of you. I'll just give you the story. There's something that happens. I wish it would always happen, but it doesn't. I was preaching, 6,000 people inside, and I don't know how many outside, the rain pouring. Old Roberts, none of the rest of them would come on the scene in them days. And I was, the tinsel was on the meeting, certainly. And while I was speaking, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There was about a couple of hundred preachers sitting behind me. And all of a sudden, down through that building come a great big man, thick, about six foot two, Weighed about 240, 250. Gray suit on, going like this, just real hard. I thought he must be bringing a message for someone. And when he got near the platform, all those preachers realized who he was, and they took a run as hard as they could go. He was a maniac out of an insane institution. And he ran to the platform, and he started walking up towards me. And he said, I weighed 128 pounds at the time. And he said, you snake in the grass, you hypocrite, you're imposing yourself as a servant of God. I'm going to break every bone in your body tonight, and I'll show this people that you're nothing but a big liar. I turned and looked at him. Ordinarily, I'd been scared to death. But instead of that, Something happened. Oh, I wished it would always happen. Instead of despising that man, I loved him. Something has to do it. I beg God, let me get in that state and stay there forever. But I loved the man. I thought, poor fellow, 
He wouldn't want to hurt me. He's out of his mind. Well, he's probably got a family somewhere. And as he started towards me, just before coming in the meeting, I led two little policemen to Christ back in the dressing room. They rushed out to get him. Now, that's the police force. Many people's call. That's authentic. We have to be before it's put in the magazine. So he, the police rushed out to get him. I said, no, don't. Leave him alone. This is a fle- not a flesh and blood. This is a spiritual affair. They just took their hats off and walked back. He walked up towards me. He said, tonight I'm going to break every bone in your body. I had to look up to see him. I thought, poor fella. Never said a word. He went, <sighs> spit right in my face and flew all over me. I thought, poor fella. He don't mean to do that. He's out of his mind. And he said, tonight I'm going to knock you way out in the middle of that audience. He was well able to do it. Great big arms. And I never said a word. I know better than to say anything. I just stood still. The audience was hushed. I just looking at him. He walked up to me. And he drew his great big arm back and started to raise back. And I heard myself speaking to him. And it said, because you have challenged the Spirit of God, tonight you'll fall over my feet. He said, fall over your feet, you low-down hypocrite. He said, I'll show you whose feet I'll fall over. And he drew his big fist back to strike me. I said, Satan, come out of the man. And he threw his hands up in the air, paralyzed him. Went, ah, ah. Turned around two or three times and fell across my feet till the policeman had to roll him off of my feet. What was it? Strength? It was love that did it. Last summer down in Mexico, where twenty-something thousand came to Christ in one night. I was standing on a platform, many times wider than this. And the people come at nine o'clock at morning to stand there at the bull ring, waiting till eight that night when it got there. No place to sit down. They just leaned against each other. They wanted to go to church. And when we got in that night, the night before the Lord had performed several miracles, there'd been a little baby that had been brought up and Billy Paul about 30 ushers couldn't hold that little woman out of the line with that baby. She claimed to die that afternoon. It'll be published soon now because it's authentic. Brother Espinosa just got it for me and confirmed it. It has to be for the doctors and so forth or we can't publish it. So then the little Woman screaming, and Billy come to me, he said, Daddy, you'll have to do something. That woman hasn't got a prayer card. And I'll give all those ushers orders not to get anyone in the prayer line without a prayer card. And said, there she is down there. She's whipped every usher down there. Just a little bitty woman. Climbed over the top of her thing, a blanket wrapped under her arm. And I said to Brother Moore, Brother Jack Moore, many of you remember him, he shared with me before. I said, Brother Moore, go down and pray for the little baby or console her some way because it wouldn't be right for me to go down there if the woman has got a prayer card. And as I started to look at my audience again, I saw that little baby out in front of me. The love of that mother. See, what it had done? It had acted before God. Her love for the baby. And I said, just a minute, Brother Moore. I shall go down. And I walked over there and I told the ushers, let her through. And she come, fell down. She said, Padre means father. She's Catholic. I said, stand up, stand up. She got up. She motioned to her baby. It was raining all along. The little blanket she had around was wet. I never looked at the baby, but I just said, put my hand on the little feller. And I said, God, it was under the blanket. Thou hast showed a vision of this little Mexican baby. That mother's love has touched you in some way. And about the time I said that, the little baby let out a big squeal and started screaming to the top of its voice. 
women faded and everything, that little baby was restored back to life by Jehovah God who felt the love of that mother pressing for her baby. Certainly it was. The next night when they lined up and they laid old blankets and coats till they were ripped up nearly four foot high. How they ever know which one more, I don't know. And as they come up to the platform, there was an old Mexican man. He was blind. And when he got up there, he took out a little beads and began to say, Hail Mary, Mother of God. I took his hand. I said, That's not necessary, Dad. The interpreter, Espinosa, interpreted. And he was blind. I said, I'll pray for you. And just as I started to pray for him, I looked down and he was barefooted. His clothes were dirty and dusty. His face was wrinkled and his cheeks need shaven. The tears were rolling down his old wrinkled cheeks. He had his hands out like this, hollering, Padre, Padre. I looked at his hands. I took his hands and laid them over my shoulder. I looked at his face. And somehow, you have to enter into his feeling. I thought how cruel life has been to the old fella. Maybe he never had a pair of shoes in his life. I set my foot upside of his to see if my shoe would fit him. It wouldn't. I put my shoulders upside of his to see if my coat would fit him. And it wouldn't. I thought there he is, maybe never sat down to a good full meal in his life. And he never had a good, decent suit of clothes on in his life. Maybe raised a bunch of little children. And besides all that, now here he is in gross darkness, blind, staggering around. I thought if my old daddy would have lived, he'd have been about that age. Something happened. My heart went out for him. There you are. You've got to get into the fellowship of these people. I took him up my arms around him and I said, Heavenly Father, please be merciful to this poor blind man. He began to holler, Glory adios, glory adios means glory to God. I turned him loose and he run down the platform kissing everybody. Could see as good as I can or you can. What was it? It was entering into divine fellowship of his suffering. I don't know how you're going to take this. I'm going to open just a little more for you. Some of my inside life. Some time ago, when I was on the warden force, near Henryville, Indiana, is a friend lives up there. And I, he was sick. And I was turning some fish loose in a creek. So I thought I'd go over and pray for the man. So I had a little old gun you had to pack as a warden. I unbuckled the thing, throwed it up in the truck and shut the door. And I thought I'd go across the field over to pray for my friend. As I walked up across the field, I was going along humming. I forgot that down at the Burks farm, a great big Guernsey bull had killed a colored man down there who was a caretaker. He was a fine animal and they didn't want to kill him. So they sold him up here to this man. I know there was warnings all around the field, but I forgot about it. They got right out in the middle of the field where there's some little old scrub oak. I don't think you have in this country. And as I passed by this, all at once this big killer bull raised up. And he snorted. And I recognized that's the bull. I turned first. I felt for the gun. It wasn't there. I'm glad it wasn't. I'd probably kill the bull and then paid for it. I felt for the gun. It wasn't there. I looked to the fence. It was too far for me. There was no trees around for me to get into. There it was nothing but to face death. I said, well, Lord, if the time has come for me to die, I want to face it like a man. I shoved my shoulders down. I said, if this is it, if I must die by this bull, then I must die. And something happened. I know this sounds like a child, 
But it's the truth. Somehow or another, instead of despising that beast, I had a love for it. And I thought that poor thing was laying out there in the field. I come in on his territory. I disturbed him. He don't know more than to protect himself. And he threw his horns down and dug the dirt up, fell onto his knees. You know how they do just before the charge? And I thought that animal, oh, I'm so sorry that I disturbed you. I said, I don't want you to kill me. I'm the servant of God. And I'm on my road to pray for some sick people. And I forgot about those signs. I was talking just as I am now. But there was something that had happened. I wasn't scared of him. I was no more afraid of that bull and I would be my brother. That's where the church is. You're always scared. It's not going to happen. That's the reason it don't happen. When that fear... Love casts out fear. When you've got love, fear is gone. But as long as you've got fear, love cannot operate. And when the bull made his charge to come to me, he come within about ten feet, and he stopped and threw his front feet out, and he looked so depleted as he looked this way and that way, and he turned and went right back around and laid down over there where he got up at. I walked across the field and went out of the pasture. He just laid there and looked at me. It was love that took the fear away. And God seen me through. Now, after I got out of the pasture and that left me, then I just shook like a leaf. But while I was in the presence of him, the fear had left. One day I was mowing my yard with a lawnmower. And I was trying to lawnmower the front. And I would make a few rounds and somebody come in to be prayed for. I'd have to run, change clothes and pray for him. While the front was growing up before I could get to the back. And it was on a hot summer afternoon. Gene, Leo and them, the boys here, bent the place. I took off my shirt. No one could see me back there in the back. And I was running this power mower. And I forgot that right down at the end of the fence was a big nest of these hornets hanging there. And I was running this mow real fast to get it cut real quick. And I never noticed them. And I not home too much. And I slammed right into those hornets. Was aiming to burn them. Get them out of there. And I hit that hornet's nest. And I with no shirt on. And just in a moment, the hole around me was covered with hornets. Anyone knows that one sting can kill you. Last summer, a man was stung on the lip by a honeybee and it broke up some kind of a blood affair, died before the doctor could get there. A hornet will knock you flat on the ground when he stings you. And you're a whole hive of them over me. But now instead of being afraid, I don't know what you're going to think of me after this. It doesn't matter because I'm telling the truth. You'll have to answer with God about what you think about it. I hit them hornets all around me. And instead of wanting to fight at him, something happened. I wasn't afraid of him. I loved him. I thought little creatures of God, staying is the only way you got to protect yourself. That's your God-given weapon. And I disturbed you out of your house. I said, now I've got to pray for God's sick children. I'm the servant of the Lord. Now in the name of our Creator, Jesus Christ, go back into your nest. I'll not bother you no more. And when I meet you at the judgment bar, them hornets whirled around me and tuck circle and made a beeline and every one of them went right back into their nest. Wow. The atmosphere had been changed. You said, Brother Brandon, that sounds silly. That's the reason you don't know the Bible. Did not the vines come after Daniel and could not touch him? The atmosphere was changed. Could the fire burn Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? The atmosphere was changed. And the God of Daniel still lives tonight. He's the same God. 
you Christian businessmen on your own digest. This story came out. Gene here, Leo there, they were sitting on the porch. I call them my student ministers. One of them a converted Catholic. I believe the other might have been a Methodist or something. They come down to my meeting in Hammond, Indiana. It was foreign them a little FBI. They didn't believe these things was right. They happened to come down home one time to find around down there if those visions happened there. They're my students. They were sitting on the porch and I was teaching them one summer morning, about 10 o'clock. And I happened to notice coming in the gate, coming old possum, coming from about two squares across the road to woods. I'm the only one's got a fence along there. They come by three houses, turned into my gate, and here it come. And I run up. I said, that possum's got rabies. We've been talking about a young colored girl who gave birth to an illegitimate child, wrapped it into a, a blanket and smothered it to death and had a taxi cab take her out on the river. And she stopped out there and just dumped the bundle over in the river. And the cab reported it. The lifeguards come out, the Coast Guard rather, and picked up the bundle. It was a dead baby. Very lovely looking girl. And her picture's in the paper. And I said, she wasn't a mother. She wasn't worthy to be called a mother. Mother has a, a sacredness to it. She's just a female that had a baby. A mother means love. So many women today that bring children that don't deserve the name of mother. So then her take that baby and dumped it into the river. And when I seen this old possum turn in, I said, that possum's got rabies. I run out and stop it. Mr. Woods, his, he was a Jehovah Witness. His boy, he didn't believe in the meetings either. And he brought his boy in the meeting, had a crippled leg. And the Lord called the boy out and his legs perfectly normal and straight. He got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. His wife's a veterinary. They quit, he was a contractor, quit his business and just moved over next door to me from Kentucky. And he had been raking in my yard out there. I went and took this rake and threw it over the old possum. Gene and Leo come out with me. I said, it's about 10 o'clock in the day in a hot summer. And I said, the old possum's got rabies. I said, I suppose, for a possum doesn't travel in daytime. If anybody knows animal life, a possum prowls at night. And I said, the, I've hunted them for years. And I said, they don't move until the sun goes down. So I said, something's wrong with her. And when I happened to look, her left shoulder was chewed up by the dogs or either hit by a car. It was swollen many times its size. And this may sound kind of bad on the tummy now, but the flies had blowed her and maggots was working all around through her, her shoulder. Well, I said, the poor old thing's a dying. And she's just beside herself. And when I was holding her down with the rake, I happened to notice and nine little bitty baby possums about two or three inches long a possum and a kangaroo is the only animal that has a pocket they packed her young in. And when I helped this rake on her, she was biting at it. Very unusual for a possum because they, what they call play possum, just lay down. But she was biting at it and that's the reason I thought she had rabies. And when I seen these nine little baby possums, oh, I said, she's a mother. I said, Jean, you and Leo come here. I want to teach you a better lesson. I said, this old mother possum is way more of a mother than that woman was that drowned her baby. I said, this old animal, she hasn't got 30 minutes to live. She can't live like that. She's dying. But she'll spend that 30 minutes fighting for her babies. For she's a mother, a real mother. She loves them. And then just then, Mrs. Woods come up, and Mr. Woods, they seen us out there in the yard. And Mrs. Woods said, well, what do you know, Brother Branham? She said, that little bitty tiny possums. And she said, what are you going to do about it? I said, I don't know. She said, well, kill it. Oh, I said, I can't kill it. Oh, she said, just kill the mother and take them little ones that got a round mouth. Said they could never nurse. Just pick them up and throw them on the ground and kill them right quick and get them out of their misery. She was a veterinarian, and that's the more humane thing to do. She just throw them on the ground and kill them right quick, and then it'll all be over. I said, Sister Woods, I know you're right, but I just can't do it. 
She said, well, let Banks do it. That's her husband. I said, I know how to want him to do it. Leo and Jean here, they looked at me and thought, what's he going to do? Why, she said, won't you go and get one of your guns and shoot it then? Said, you're a hunter. Why don't you go kill it? I said, I'm a hunter, but I'm not a killer. I said, I can't kill her. Said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. And I noticed you're scrambling for those little babies. And when I let that rake up, you know what she done? That one leg dragon, here she went, just as hard as she could go, and went right down in front of my steps and there passed out. And those little possums, when she passed out, that, of course, that let that card loose and she could, they come out of the pocket and those nine little possums trying to nurse her. That's all they know how to do. And Miss Wood said, Billy, you mean you're going to let them little possums die that horrible death? She said, she's dead. And you're going to let them little possums drink that old milk from her like that and die that horrible death? I said, Brother Bram, that's brutal. I said, it may be, Miss Woods, but I ain't got the heart to kill her. I tuck and punch the old possum. And you can just barely see that she's still alive. I said, she's still alive. Well, there she laid there in a hot sun. Someone come in, Jeannie and Leo left. All that day, the old possum laid there. That night come, Mr. Woods come up and said, Now, Billy, you've been busy all day long. God, get you out a little while so he can relax. I said, All right, Brother Woods. We went out that night and was riding around, come down the road. I stopped real quick. A little puppy was on the road. And I picked the little fella up, and he was so full of mange and lice till he was running all over my arms. I brought him in the car, and me, he said, My wife said, Billy, you're not going to pick up that little old mangy dog. I said, Sure. He's just a baby. He's got a right to live. So what are you going to do with him? I said, well, I'm going to take him home. Somebody dropped him. It's a shame. I took the little fellow home, washed him off, and prayed for him. He's one of the finest collie dogs you've ever seen. See, you don't have to do that. Kill him. And when we come in at 11 o'clock, old mother possum is laying there. Dude done got on her. Little, nurse, little one's still nursing. Mr. Wood said, Billy, look at there. You know good well, boy. If that possum was ever going to move, it would move when it got dark. I said, I know, Brother Woods, but I, I can't kill it. And so about 12 o'clock, Billy Paul, my boy, had been out fishing. So he come in and the old possum still in there. Next morning, about six, I got up, looked out on the rack, see if anybody was out there. No one was there. So I thought, Billy, well, go out and see about my possum. I thought of her all night when I wake up. I went out and looked. There she laid. I said, well, I guess poor old thing's dead. And I went out and tucked my foot and kicked on her like that. And she didn't move. And that little possum's still there. Just then I heard the door slam and my little Rebecca, real spiritual little girl, saw her first vision just recently. I believe the Spirit of God's on the child. She come out and she said, Daddy, is that old possum dead? I said, I don't know, honey. He said, Daddy, what you go do with that possum? I said, honey, I don't know. She said... Daddy, she's a real mother, isn't she? I said, she sure is, honey. But I, he said, are you going to let him suffer, Daddy? I said, honey, look, you ought to be up. Run on back in the house with Mommy. And um, so I tried to get her in off the porch. I kicked on the old possum a little bit. I seen her move her foot a little, and I thought, well, she's still laying there, no doubt suffering. Well, I went into the den room on the side and sat down, kind of put my hands up like this and begin to rub my head. I thought, I don't know what to do with that possum. Perhaps maybe I don't want him to kill her because she's a mother. I don't know what to do about her. I was rubbing my head like this. Something said, I thought you preached about her yesterday. You said she's a real mother and you made a text out of her. I said, I, I did do that. And said, well, as a mother dying, as a real lady, She's laid at your door for 24 hours waiting her turn to be prayed for. I said, well, I didn't. I thought, what's the matter with me? Am I talking to myself? I thought, who is I speaking to? Well, I thought that must have been God. Well, I opened the door and went out. I shut my head and I thought, why? I was talking to somebody. Somebody was talking to me and there's nobody here. Now, you can imagine how you felt. And I walked outside a little possum. I said, Heavenly Father, I know you direct people, but animals are yours too. You spoke to a mule one day. 
You know every sparrow that falls on the street. If you, oh God, sent that poor ignorant possum animal over there and the dogs you chewed her up that I might pray for and I didn't know it, forgive me, Lord, for not understanding. I said, if she's a mother to be prayed for at these little ones so she can raise her little babies, and if your love, her love of that brute has touched you and you sent that dumb animal who doesn't have a soul, if you sent that possum here to be prayed for, I ask you, oh Lord God, let thy will be done and heal the possum. Now this is shocking, but when I quit praying and looked up, that old possum was standing on her feet. She had her little possums all gathered up, that tail twisted sideways, walked on that crippled leg just as straight as she could, right down to the gate. Little Becky was standing there, I put my arm around her, the old possum looked back as if to say, thank you sir, right down the road she went with her babies over to the woods. God in heaven knows that's the truth that was printed the world around. And it's the truth, the newspapers packed it, the businessmen's packed it. Why? It was God. He knows. And if that old, if God could leave that old possum up there to be prayed for because she loves her babies, how much more will he answer prayer for you who's his children? It's love, brother. Love does the trick. Love is what does it. It's something gallant that stands out. God wants you to take love and be gallant with it. Not love and hold it to yourself. Display your love. Prove your love. Show me your faith by your works. There you are. Prove that you love God. In closing, I might say this. The great story of many of you men and women here around my age, remember it used to be in the school books, is too quickly forgotten. That was a story of a great hero in Switzerland. Call his name and the Swiss people a cry right now, up in the mountains. Arnold von Winklard. Many of you remember him in your school books. One day when Switzerland was backed into the corner of the little economy, was at stake. The invaders about 400 years ago swarmed in there like a flower of bees. They got their little old hand sickles and size blades and rocks and whatever they could to go down in the valley to defend their homes. And here come this all marching army, just like a brick wall. Well trained, armored spears, every little step, marching right on. And here stood these poor little Swiss backed into a corner. There was nothing they could do. They were absolutely hopeless and helpless. All this fine, trained, outnumbered by the thousands, just like a brick wall, moving right on. What could they do? Finally, one man, for the love of his country, Arnold von Winklard, stepped out. He said, man of Switzerland, this day I'm going to give my life for Switzerland, and this day I will save Switzerland. His comrade said to him, Arnold von Winklard, what will you do? He said, back over the hill yonder is a little white home, three loving children and a wife. They're looking for me and praying for me to return, but I'll never see him again on this earth. He said, for this day, I'm a safe Switzerland. He said, what will you do? He said, follow me and fight with what you've got and do the best you can. He threw down the weapon he had in his hand, he started towards, he looked around first and found the very thickest of those spears. He run to him with his hands up in the air screaming, make way for liberty, make way for liberty. And as he run, many of you know the story, and as he run towards them, about a hundred spears turned to catch him on the end of those spears. And when he got right to him, he grabbed an arm full of them and threw them into his bosom and died. Such a display of heroism and love for his country. It routed that big army and those Swiss come in with clubs and beat that army out of their country and they've never had a war since. That display has seldom been matched. Seldom been. 
Last year, where I'll be in the next few weeks, Lord willing, up in Switzerland again, just speak his name and watch the people cry up there in the mountains. They know that their fine homes and their safety today was because one man loved them and displayed his love. That was a great hero act, but oh, that was nothing, friend. Till one day when Adam's race was all backed into a corner. The children of Adam, God had sent them laws and prophets and they wouldn't keep it. They wouldn't listen to them. And they were all backed in the corner with sicknesses and diseases and superstitions and doubt and fears. There was one stepped out of heaven, the Son of God. He said, I'm going to earth to give my life for Adam's fallen race. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And when he came to earth, he looked around and seen where man's most fear was. The thickest of the spears was death. Man, as long as he's healthy and fine, he can blaspheme and run around, but let him come down to that dying hour. There it was. And he found the thickest of the spears, and he rushed out into death and gave his life as a sacrifice. Displaying the love of God for Adam's fallen race. What did he leave back for we preachers? He said, go up down there to the Jerusalem and wait there until you're endued with power from on high. And when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you'll be witnesses of me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Saskatoon, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And with the weapon that he's left us, he told us to dash into sickness and to sin, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Men and women, it's time that we picked up the weapon that our hero of God's love left us and dash out there and fight against ignorance and superstitions and formality and break down the walls of the enemy and display the real gallant love that we believe in God and His Word. So sickness is healed and devils are routed and blind see and death here. God help me to do it as long as I got a breath left in my body. Display the love that I believe for the man who died for me. May you do the same as we bow our heads a moment for prayer. Lord Jesus, there's no love like the love of God. There could not be nothing ever match it. When we were helpless and without hope, you died in our stead. God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but would have eternal life. I ask that your divine grace and your presence of the Holy Spirit, as Arnold von Winklard said, the hero of Switzerland, fight with what you've got. Now, Lord, you've not given sticks and stones to fight with, but the blessed Holy Spirit in the meekness and gentleness of Christ in the power of his resurrection with his being here with us now. The same yesterday, today, and forever. To bring to naught the things of the world. And God to issue in his everlasting kingdom. Grant, Lord, tonight that these things may be manifested in our sight. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now, as you look this way. One thing is to speak of something, another thing is to do something. A man can say anything he wants to, if he wants to lie about it, and just go on. But when God speaks, God confirms what he speaks. God makes real those things that he speaks of. Now, as I have just said a few moments ago, Jesus Christ, God's Son, some of you are Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Nazarenes, Pilgrim, Holiness, Catholic. You're all different mixed up here in this little handful of people tonight. Doesn't matter how small you are, you've got a right to the gospel. You've got a right to it. I don't condemn any church, any denomination. I love them all. But brother, somebody's right and somebody's wrong. It's up to God to do the speaking. We're at the end time. You know that. 
There's an atomic bomb hanging out in Russia with your names on it right here in Saskatoon, and you know that. So does the rest of the world know it. There'll be a annihilation one of these days. You know it's not far off. It's just the hand of God holding it. What's going to happen? What did our president say the other night? We want to keep strong. Let our aggressor know that whenever he drops a bomb, he's going to destroy himself too. Sure, planes and great tanks and great hangers out there with guns trained right on the whole world everywhere. Just the only thing is let one drop. That's all it takes. Then something's going to happen. No wonder. Let me ask you something. Just before every junction of time, look at the Andalusian world. Everything at the beginning, it was all God. It scattered out through religious worship. Cain, just as religious as Abel was. Come on down. Everything went cold and formal for a long time. Sinus and buildings and so forth. All of a sudden, what happened? Up sprung a prophet. In went the supernatural. Here come a message, and the world was destroyed. Bring it down to the time. You say a prophet before? Yes, sir. Enoch, Noah, the ark, signs, angels appeared. God always does it. Now listen. And just as He brought Israel out four hundred years, a lot longer than we've been a nation. Four hundred years in ignorance down in Egypt. What happened? Everything was just cold and formal. Days of miracles just passed. Everything the church is believing that. All of a sudden, a prophet arose. An angel appeared in a burning bush. Signs and wonders went forth, and God pulled out Israel and destroyed Egypt. And she cooled off again. Two years after a while, it's just about the time for Jesus to be born. What happened? A prophet arose. John the Baptist. Signs and wonders begin to appear. The Son of God was crucified. She cooled off. We went through a space of time now. What is it? It's at the end time again. What's happening? Prophets are appearing. Signs and wonders are being done. Never known of it in the world. Never has been in two thousand years of things that's taken place right in Saskatoon. Right, two thousand years since it's happened. Signs and wonders, messages going forth. Billy Graham, Oral Roberts, great man, blasting it away everywhere, and America sits with her arms folded. And the rest of us say, "You a bunch of fanatics." Newspapers give them the dirtiest write-ups they can get. God showing signs and wonders, just exactly. He said, "He's the same yesterday and forever. He'll do the very he that believeth in me. The works that I do shall he also. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. A little while in the world won't see me no more. Yet you shall see me, for I will be with you even in you to the end of the world." The things of life that I live, the things that I do, do the same thing. Them signs are manifested, and people just sit down and say, "I'm a Presbyterian, I'm Pentecostal." But brother, are you a Christian? Are you ready to meet it? That's the thing. I'm your brother, and I love you. A portion of your living's been given to me a while ago for my living. And I'd be a a really a, a rat. If I stood in this pulpit and shunned to declare the counsel of God or told you something wrong, but as a lover of your soul and as a lover of your being, I say unto you that Jesus Christ is absolutely the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's raised from the dead, alive tonight, right here in this building now. Well, you say I don't see him. We talk about this light when it appeared. Many of us seen it. It's in Washington D.C. Copyrighted. The only light. Supernatural being that was ever photographed. You know the story of it. It went through the papers around the world. What was it? It's the same angel of God that led the children of Israel. Oh, you say Jesus? Yes, sir. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday day, and forever. I said, Watch just a moment before we start. Who was it, readers, Bible scholars? What was it led the children of Israel out of Egypt? It was the angel of the covenant. Is that right? Who is the angel of the covenant? Jesus Christ. He was a pillar of fire. He stood here on earth. He said, "I come from God. I go back to God." He come here as manifested in flesh. When he went back, you say he went back to a light again? Absolutely. The Bible said so. It does. Read where Paul was on his road down to Damascus, and a light was spread before him. It even dimmed his eyes. Them who stood by never saw it. 
Paul saw it. You believe Paul saw it? Then we stood by and never saw it, but Paul did. It even blinded his eyes. He was blind for several days. He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. Is that the Bible? Then if he's raised from the dead, here's his picture scientifically that he's the same. Here's his works moving on that he's the same. But the reason you're looking at it because some educated person like myself is bringing you the message. Don't you look at the messenger, look at the message. What I'm talking about. Now Christ is here. Now I declare to you he's raised from the dead. He loves you. He wants your soul. He wants to heal you. He wants to make you happy. He wants to bring you up in the glory. He can only do it as you permit him to do it. He can't do it against your will. So now, if he has raised the dead, and the woman, that, usually I bring the people up to the platform one by one. You see me do that? The Lord has changed it. Right here at Saskatoon. This has worked. It will tonight. There's not a person in this building that I know. I know for yeah, I beg your pardon. I did see the... Um, Sister Sofman and Sister Norman, Brother Norman, sitting right out here. That's all I know. How many of you know that I don't know you? Raise up your hands like this. That you know that I don't know you. Put your hands up everywhere you are, anywhere. Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he was standing here with this suit on that he gave me, and you would say, Lord, the Bible says that you are a high priest that could be touched by the feeling of my infirmities. Do you believe you could touch his garment like the woman did and he'd turn and tell you what you done? you believe he could do that if he's the same yesterday and forever? Certainly he could if he's the same. Blind Bartimaeus who cried at the gate, Jesus couldn't hear his cry, but he felt his cry and he turned around to see what it was. Just look through the Bible and see if that isn't. Look at the woman at the well, how he told her of her husbands, and they said, that's the sign of the Messiah. How many knows that the Samaritans know that was the sign of Messiah? Raise your hands, because Jesus knew what was wrong with the woman. How many knows that the Jews know it was the sign of Messiah? Sure they did. When Nathaniel come and got, well, Philip got Nathaniel, and Nathaniel come, Jesus said, behold an Israelite in whom there's no God. He said, when did you know me, Rabbi? He said, for Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. He said, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel, a witness right there for the Jews. But of course, the orthodox starchy, those big church members, they said, that's Beelzebub, he's a fortune teller. Jesus said, you speak that against me, it'll be forgiven you. But when the Holy Ghost has come and does the same thing, one word against it, it'll never be forgiven in this world, the world to come. See how people has got, God's got them on a free moral agency. They can get up and walk out, they can do whatever they want to. But judgment hangs before us all. Now that's true. Now Christ is raised from the dead. If he comes here tonight and with a divine gift will reach into that audience there with your prayer, you pray, God. Say, oh Jesus, the high priest of my confession that can be touched by the feeling of my infirmities. Last night we asked you to pray for somebody else. Did he do it? Tell you who you're praying for? Did he raise your hands? All over the building to the newcomers. How many were sure last night to see that happen? Raise your hand. All right. Now tonight... Do whatever you want to. Pray for yourself or pray for somebody else. Just look up to God and say, your Bible said that you would do these things. The man tells us, and it's in the Bible, the same things that you did. He said that you'd be with us in us, and he set some in the church to do certain things. Prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. Now, Lord, he shows me a picture and said it was you. When he shared before, he said these things would happen, that it would come to pass. He didn't, couldn't do it then, but he'd know the very secrets of the hearts of the people. Ten years ago when I was here, how many still here tonight remembers I said that would happen? Raise your hand. There you are. Now, that, if, that's, if that was of God, it's the truth. If it wasn't of God, it isn't the truth. How would I ever know I'd live to see it? Because God said so. That settles it. And here it is. Now, if he'll perform that, God gave Moses two signs. One of them was in his hand, one was another sign. To go down and perform before Israel, and they, everyone believed him when he committed that sign one time. Is that right? They followed him right into the wilderness. Now, Christ sent me to prove to you that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Now, I don't want you to follow me, I want you to follow the Holy Spirit. He's the leader that will take you to the promised land, just as sure as I'm here. He'll do it. Now, you believe. Look this way. Let's start over here. Someone in this locality back in here pray and say God I'm in need and I want you now somebody without a prayer card 
Let those that's got prayer cards, we're going to call them up and pray for them here at the platform. Somebody without a prayer card. Say, Lord, I'm in need. I, I'm going to ask you something, Lord. I've heard Brother Bram preach this several times. I'm going to ask you, let, it, let me tonight, if I can just touch you. I'm not looking to that preacher. I'm looking to you. And I'm going to ask you, Father, let me touch you. If you let Brother Bram turn right to me and tell me that, that I've asked you in prayer, then I know it'll be you. There you are. That's the challenge to the Bible. How, well, you want to come take my place? If you doubt it, come up here and let me see you do it. Platform's open. Come up and do it. Certainly, I've challenged the Mohammeds. I've challenged the witch doctors. I've never seen a time of what God moved. So will he tonight. I believe him. I love him. The fear of, of failure has gone from me because I love him. I trust him. I believe him. And I know he'll do it. Now you pray. I want to ask you something. If God will do it at least... For two or three people in the building here somewhere, will every one of you say, I'll believe that God absolutely has raised from the dead and he's sure to give me right in this building tonight what I want. Will you do it? Raise your hand if he'll do it. Wonderful. God bless your hearts. I got to spend an endless eternity with you. And I pray. Just be praying. There's nothing I can't control it. You say, Brother Ben, what about me? I don't know. It's what God has to tell me. But that's the sign that he said would be here in the last day. As I just look and watch. And everyone just as reverent as you can be now, you're in the presence of Christ. Say, what are you doing, Brother Branham? I'm just doing the same thing that our Lord did when he stood watching who touched him. People are touching at him. Now he has to speak to me. Now raise your head just a moment. Now this light that's on the picture is hanging right here and a man sitting in a wheelchair with something. Right here at the end. Have you a prayer card, mister? On the end? You have one? Well, let's keep it in your pocket. That's all right. You were praying anyhow. You were praying for me to say something to you. Praying to God. I don't know you, I've never seen you. But if God will reveal to me, just like he did to Nathaniel, where he was at or what he would done or where he come from or something about it, you know what I don't know. Will you believe him with all your heart? You will? Will the rest of you believe with all your heart? Now, I see the man... It, his trouble is in his back and in his spine. That's exactly right. And he is not from this city. He's come a long ways. And he come from the west coming east. He come to a place where there's a great big place where horses have a, lot, a stampede. Calgary he come from. And the man's name is Earl. That's right. You believe now with all your heart that Jesus Christ, God's Son, will heal you and make you well? You accept it and believe that he'll heal you? All right, then you can go home and be made well. Now I challenge the rest of you to ask the same thing. Will you believe over in this section? Somebody in here believe with all your heart. May God grant it. God knows I'm not, this is not a floor show. Neither is it any kind of a show. It's Jesus Christ getting you quiet so he can display his power to let you know that I've told the truth. Don't move. Just be quiet if you can. Here it is, a little woman sitting right back this side here. She's wearing a black hat. She's praying for someone which is her brother. And the brother is an alcoholic. That's right, isn't it, lady? Way back there with a little black hat on. Yes, sir. 
He has to take sleeping pills to sleep at night. That's right. And he's another thing. He was a Christian once, and he's backslid because I see a dark shadow over the man. That's right. Now, do you believe? You believe God will answer your prayer? May He grant it. Is my sincere desire. I don't know you, do I, lady? I don't know you, do I? Never seen you in my life. If that's right, shake your hands like this. Was ever think of that the truth? There you are. Now you believe. How about in this row here? What do you all think? Somebody there praying. Be sincere. Look to Christ. Believe that He's raised from the dead. I come reverently. You have to come to a gift. The woman touched his garment. She was made well. But the Roman who put a rag around his head and hit him on the head said, "Now, if you could prophesy, tell us who hit you." He didn't feel nothing. You got to come reverent, believing, not just trying to test out, but you got to believe. That little lady sitting there at the end. She's praying for her husband. The husband has got tumor, kidney trouble, something wrong with his bowels. The doctors give him up. That's right. You believe God will make him well? You will accept it. If you do, raise up your hand like that. I'll accept it. All right. God grant it to you, sister. How about the balcony over here? Y'all are not uh, immune to it. Each one of you pray and ask God something over in the balcony. How many is that? Is that three yet? All right, let's have another one from the balcony. Pray, believe. The Lord be blessed. There's a little lady with her head bowed. You can raise your head now, if you will. You were praying for someone. A little lady's wearing glasses and got a pink hat on. You were praying for somebody, a loved one. That's a mental patient. The woman put her hand up to her face. There, that's true, isn't it, lady? Wasn't you praying for that? If it is, raise up your hand. If you believe your brother can be made well, you believe it with all your heart. And how do I know what you were praying for? The God that can hear prayer can answer prayer. Now, do you believe all of you with all your heart? Where's the? What about the baby? I don't see nothing over the baby. But who's the parents of the baby? Who's got the baby? You yeah. have. Have you got a card for it? All right, just spin it's a baby. Let's just there. You just brought the baby in, perhaps, and set it down there. If God will reveal to me what's wrong with that baby, will you accept it? You believe that Christ would be kind to it then? Now I don't know. It may be polio. It may be have a fever. I, I don't know nothing about it. You know I don't. But if God will reveal to me what's wrong with the baby, I couldn't heal it because I'm not a healer. But God knows the baby. If Jesus was standing right here with this suit on, He couldn't heal the baby. He's already done it. It's your faith. He's trying to do this to raise your faith to believe that he has done it. Would you believe it, Dad and Mother? I see the baby at the doctor. The doctor shakes his head. He said the baby's got cancer, and it's all to it, legs and all. And he's done. He give the baby a certain time to live, and the baby's done live to pass the time. But he says the baby must die. You. I somehow another I see Fred Softman standing there. You either know him or you live near him or something other. I see him standing near that cop right now in a vision. That's right. I challenge your faith to Jesus Christ. Anywhere in the building, I challenge it. Yes, sir. You believe God? Do you do it? Don't you realize, friend, that what you're right in here now is the uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God? How can we hold still? How can we fail? How can we sit numbed, as it was by the tears of life or the fear that ought to bring every cripple to his feet? That ought to bring every sinner to repentance. What more can God do? 
nothing but appear in a corporal body, then your prayers will be too late. Don't you realize that? Let's bow our heads just a moment. I'm going to ask you something. Well, if you've been a sinner and you don't know Christ and you want him to forgive your sins now while he's right here present, raise up your hand and say, Brother Brandon, remember me right now in prayer. I hear won't accept Christ. God bless you, lady. That's right. That's what Christ appears for, is to save souls. Someone else will raise your hand, will you? Say, I now want to accept Christ. God bless you, sir. Somebody else say, Brother Branham, I've been to church, but never did I see the Bible made real like that. There's got to be something. You know that something's doing that. Now, it depends on what you think it is. If you want to say it's Beelzebub, go ahead. That'll be between you and God. If you believe it's Jesus Christ, then God will reward you for it. But that's the only way you'll ever, you'll either be cursed by it or you'll be blessed by it. Either which one you want to be. It's up to you. But if you're just a church member and never been born again, why don't you raise your hands to Christ right now and say, Remember me, Lord. I now want you to remember me. I have a need of you in my life, and I want you to remember me. Is there another besides these two that's raised their hands? I know I just went through an altar call. God bless you, my colored brother, sitting right here at the end. God be with you, brother. Listen, one day there was an old cross dragging up Golgotha, dragging out the bloody footprints of the barrier. And he fell over the load. And Simon, a colored man, come and picked up the cross and helped him bear it on. He knows, my brother, that you've been staggering long in darkness without God. He's come to you tonight. He remembers you helped him bear the cross. He bore it for you. God bless you. May you go in peace, my brother. Someone else will raise your hand and say, Brother Branham, remember me before God. Well, I know that there's something on you, man. You're just a man. And there's something there. I know it ain't you. You're not even... Even intelligent. Why well, you don't even know, you ain't even got a grammar school education. But something is happening, I know it is, and I believe it's God fulfilling His Word. Here it is scientific, here it is in your midst. The Bible said it would be here. The scientific world says it's the truth. And the Holy Spirit here is saying, I'm here, I'm with you. Now what are you going to do about it? It's up to you. i got one more night. Will you raise your hand saying, remember me? God bless you, lady. God bless you, sister. God bless you. That's good. God bless you back there, my brother. Someone else say, God, remember me. You're not raising your hand to me now. God bless you, brother. You're not raising your hand to me. You're raising it to Christ. Raise it to Christ. God, remember me. God bless you. Bless you, my colored brother here. God bless you, little boy sitting here, honey. Someone else now, raise your hands right quickly. Say, remember me. Say, Brother Bram, does that make any difference? I raise my hand. Absolutely. It makes a decision. As I've said many times, you can't raise your hand without defying every law of nature. Gravitation holds your hands down. There's something in you. God bless that little darling girl. She just heard the saying, raise your hand. She raised hers. God bless this young lady over here. Sure, you've got some supernatural in you. God bless you, brother. See, it defies the law of nature, of gravitation. It raises it up. It makes a decision. God bless you back there, my sister. He says, yes, I believe in God. The God that's in me says, raise your arms. I do it. What does it do? You pass from death to life when you do it, if you really mean it. Right here in the presence of Jesus Christ, right here where he's moving, working, infallible proofs of his being here. Here it is, every way to be proven he's here. The next thing you'll see of him will be his corporal body coming in glory. Then he that's filthy is filthy still. He that's righteous is righteous still, and he that's holy is holy still. The time will be over. Is there another before prayer? God bless these two little boys up here with their hands up. Bless you, honey. God certainly sees you. This little lad sitting right down here, the Lord bless you, honey. May he grant to you your heart's desire and make you a little preacher for tomorrow, if there is a tomorrow. Would someone else, God bless you, my brother, sitting over here. As you raise your hands to Christ, may he bless you and take every guilt from you and make you a real servant of his. Now let us pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, tonight we've lingered long, preached hard, told these little things that's happened along the line, and how many hundreds of those things could we stand here till morning and then till night again telling of what you've done, and then would not half tell it. And what I've seen you do myself, oh, you're so real, you're more than life. And now these people have raised their hands, Lord, that they believe that you're the Son of God, that you're here in this last days and the sun's a setting and the Bible said it'll be light in the evening. 
the light of the gospel has come. And I pray, Father, that you'll bless them. This young man, old man, both the Indian, the colored man, the Anglo-Saxon, the little children, all, keep them all in thy blessed presence, Lord. Fill their heart with such love for you that the world will never be able to lure them away from you anymore. Grant it, Lord. Take them into thy care and give to them the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Larm their souls with love and may they go out and win others to Christ, even the little children in their schools, the old man at his work, wherever it may be, or cutting his yard by the side of his neighbor. Oh, God, I pray that you'll help them, everyone. They are love gifts that you have given to Christ. None can pluck them from my Father's hand. And they are given by the Father's hand into the hand of Christ. And no man can come except my Father draws him. And all that comes, I'll give him everlasting life. Grant, Lord, that they'll have everlasting life from this hour. For I commit them into thy hands of the fruits of the message. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, they had held up their hand, you sitting by them, reach over. And if I was to pray for sick and be sincere, and God would heal them. How many knows that was wrote in my book ten years ago and heard me say it? He said, if you'll be sincere, it'll come to pass. You take hold of a person's hand, and you'll know what disease they got. How many remembers that? Then he said, if you'll be sincere, you'll know the very thoughts of your heart. And you'll be able to tell them the very discernment of their heart. How many knows he said that? I couldn't do it then. But it happened. He said in this ministry of yours, it's just be given to you, we'll start a worldwide revival. Has it done it? Certainly it has. Oh, Roberts, all these others come right off. That's exactly A. A. Allen, the whole group of them come right from that. And look, in every nation nearly, Africa, India, Palestine, everywhere, there's great healing services going on right this very hour, all over the world. Jesus is coming. That's right. I look to you, you people there. It's in the line. Do you believe? Now, to take you one by one, no, and tell you, go down, search it out like I used to before I would try to cast out an evil spirit. I'd first I would search that case down to see if there's any sin in their life first before I did it. Because they might have done something wrong. And God would hold me responsible for doing that. But now each and the people complained. They said, You don't pray for enough. Look at that lion stand there now. Never a meeting or Roberts gets any more than that. You're in this meeting, or any of the rest of them or Brother Allen. Certainly not. You can't do it. But I can have the discernment and still have this meeting. That's the grace of God. All right, just be reverent now. Only thing I can do is pray and lay hands on you. I'm going to ask everyone to be just as quiet as you can and be in prayer. Before this woman comes to this platform sitting right here, let me show you something. The woman is coming to be prayed for for deafness. She's deaf. I can feel that is a deaf spirit on the woman. Right here. Sitting before me now. And it knows that woman has faith also. It's perhaps going to have to leave just in a moment. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads just a moment. Let's pray. Raise your head just a moment. Watch here, see? She says, ruptured eardrum. Now, everybody be reverent just a moment. Dear God, with a ruptured eardrum, how could the woman be able to hear the gospel? Faith cometh by hearing, but what if he can't hear? Then I pray that the audience might know that you're the Son of God. I pray that you'll heal this dear woman. And will make her well and take away this deafness from her ears. May it start this very hour. And may she be made well. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus' name, I ask the deaf spirit to go out of the woman. And now everybody keep your head bowed a minute. That's a nice little seed you're wearing. Mustard seed. 
That's all it takes is that mustard seed faith, isn't it? Thank you. Isn't that right? Yes. All right, you can raise your head. How long have you been wearing that little seed? Quite a long time. Quite a long time. Well, it's a wonderful thing. Yes. Some people has faith for miracles. Some has a little bit of mustard seed faith, but if it's all, you know, mustard seed won't mix with any other seed. So a mustard seed will do the trick. I know God's faith. Amen. Amen. Now, I've got my fingers stuck in her good ear, and here she is hearing me normally speaking out of this ear. God bless her. Thank you. Bless her. You love the Lord? Says it. And then you're, that's your name, and you come from a place called Beachy, Saskatchewan. That's right. Return home now, you're well. Jesus makes you well. Bless the Lord. You believe God? How did he know who she was, where she come from, what was wrong with her, how it would be? I didn't know it. God does. Now let's just try to keep away from that if we can, because we won't get one third of these through, not but a few. Let's just all be in prayer now. And what's your trouble, brother? Yours. Stomach. Stomach trouble. You tell what's wrong with you as soon as you come so I won't catch that. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal this man of his stomach trouble. And may he go home tonight and be made well as I pray this prayer of faith for this, my brother. I ask it to happen in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I believe it. Don't you, brother? Absolutely. Hey, God bless you. Praise Thank you, God bless you. Your trouble, sister? You believe that Lord will make you well? Right, let me have your hand just a moment. Now, look. There you know that there's something here that knows what's wrong with you. You realize that you're staying in the presence of something besides a man to make you feel like that. Now, if that's right, raise up your hand to the audience. Certainly. It's that anointing. That's what I'm talking about. See? That's what's in the presence. That's what made the big animal stop. That's what made the beast go to his box. See, it's the Holy Spirit. He knows. He knows all about you. Do you believe it is the Holy Spirit? Then you can ask him anything and he'll grant it to you. And your nervousness and things will leave you. you believe that? I bless this dear woman, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for her healing. Amen. God bless you, sister. Have what you ask for. In what is it? You believe that Jesus will heal you, the diabetes, little boy? You believe he'll make you well? Well, I believe he will, too. Dear Heavenly Father, by faith I take this little boy, and we know when children get diabetes, if you don't help them, it's awful. But I pray now as I take him by faith in the shadows of the cross and ask that Jesus Christ, God's Son, blesses this little lad and takes diabetes away from him in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Sonny boy, the great angel of God who stood near Brother Brandon, which is here right now. You might not be able to see it, but it's here. You recognize that. You're blessed. God has brought you into his presence. Now you go away believing that you'll get over your diabetes. You write and tell me about it. Will you do it? God bless you, Jesus. All right. The little boy. You believe that Jesus healed your eyes? That you die. Jesus of Nazareth, as this little boy looks up here in his little eyes in the condition that they're in, I pray that you'll heal him, make him well, and take this horrible thing away from him, and let his little eyes be normal and well. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it to be, as I lay my hands on this innocent child, too young to know what's right and wrong, I pray that you will grant it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, all right now? Your little eyes are as straight as they can be. Look out to the audience there so people can see. Look over this way. Look back this way. How you know if I want to be wet? Let's say thanks be to God. You believe that God will heal you? Now look, sister. It's more like an expression. Now, let me ask you something. Usually it hurts you know, a little bit of when it gets worse than that. Especially when the sun starts setting. You get a scary, weary feeling. Sometimes you think you're going to lose your mind. You drop things when you're starting. That's right. I'm not reading your mind, but that's true. Isn't it? All right. I see something here knows you. Before you come to this meeting, you was praying. If you could God in mind, you was going to accept. You want a place to cut your foot, you said. To set your foot. Is that exactly what you're talking about? That's what you've been believing and one to praying about? Now, how do I know what you've been praying about and what you're saying out here? No, before you come, what you did at the house. It's something you're telling me, is that right? That's God. 
He wants to make you well. He'll do it right now. You believe it? It'll leave you right now. It can't stand in His presence. No, it can't stand it. It'll leave you. But now if you keep believing, it'll always stay from you. If it don't, see, do uh, you understand what it is? What's it? How old are you? Now do you know what it is? It's menopause, sister. It's changing life. See, you just get all kinds of things. There's really nothing wrong. Hormones are ceasing in your body, and they don't put out them. Don't you let a doctor give you any hormones. That's the first case of taking cancer. It's cells are coming in you. You keep them out. Go right on and believe God. What is cancer but a multiplication of cells? Now, hormones is like what you're doing. It's just like you've been taking dope and they take you off of it. Why? Ah, you don't know what to do. Your body actually puts out hormones. And now it's not putting out hormones anymore. See? And that it's a nature thing. After a while, it'll be over. But now, the devil will run you crazy if he can. But don't you let him do it. You look at Christ right now. And be oh, God, this poor little nervous thing standing here in her poor little eyes, dancing around, and knowing that the devil is trying to get her into his grip. Thou devil, I charge thee in Jesus' name to come out of the woman. Leave her. And as I put my hand up on her as a believer in Jesus Christ, you leave this woman alone in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, look up this way now. It's gone now. You're quiet now. You feel all right, don't you? Raise your hand if that's right. Yes, you feel, see? Amen. It's not going to your own rejoicing. Let's say praise the Lord. I'm not going to mean much to you, but if you're just not shaking, it would mean something to you. It can't stand in the presence of God. God said so. That settles it. Just as true as he knows your heart. He said those words. He said he'd do it in the Bible. Here he is doing it. Prove it. Here he is confirming it everywhere. What do you want to do with brother? What? Heart. Heart. You believe he'll do it? Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, touch this man's body tonight and take his heart trouble away from him and make him completely well. I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, bless the Lord. You believe in Christ on him, he says, what's your trouble trying to do you, man? You believe in he'll do it? Oh, blessed Lord, as I hold this dear woman by the hand, pray all I know the prayer of faith, Father. And I ask this love in my heart for you and love for this dear woman. Oh, just a little while and she'd have a white cane in her hand beating along on the street. Grant, Lord, it'll never be so. May she be healed. I bless her in the name of Jesus Christ, whose presence we're in now. Amen. God bless you, sister. You believe you'll be all right? So do I. The Lord be with you. Bless you. How do you do that? Just a moment, something taking place in the audience. Something happened. Uh, uh, please just be reverent if you want to see each one of you moving along. Your, your, your soul, you see, your spirit. And every spirit is subject to this Holy Spirit here. Certainly. And as you disturb or even misthink or something, it happens, something happens. You say, Brother Bram, is that why well, certainly it's the scripture? Here, he hasn't gone. This lady here, you believe me, lady? You believe me to be God, sir? I've never seen you in my life, did I? We're perfectly strangers. If God in heaven will reveal to me what you're here for, so that people will see that you're just a woman walking up your line, would you believe in all your heart? You be the judge. If he knows, I can't heal you if you're sick. I've got very little money if it's finance, I'd give it to you. I don't know. You know I don't. I've never seen you in my life. And this is our first time meeting. Is that right? Raise up your hand. Now, audience. Now, if Christ is the same yesterday and forever, what about this? Will he do it? I believe he will. The lady is shattered with death. The woman has cancer. That is right. There's a black shadow hanging right by him. And that cancer is in the colon. The balance. That's right. You believe me now? Now, the more I talk to you, the more be said. Is that the same Lord that would know what the woman's trouble was? The same Jesus that talked to the woman just a minute to find her trouble? Let me tell you this. As he told Philip where he come from, you're not from the city. You're from a place called Edmonton, or Alberta. You're from Alberta. 
and your name is Mrs. Clark. That's right, isn't it? Now go on your road and rejoice to be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe? So Pray. Keep your hands down. Pray for these people. Come, sir. Just tell me. Speak out what your troubles are. Like Lord, I pray that you will heal this dear brother and will make him completely whole and take all the sickness from him in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, my dear brother. I'll get this. Believe it now with all your heart. You should. You're, you, of course, you got a little French back here. You believe that God will make you well? Lord God, I pray that you'll heal this little boy and make him well. In Jesus Christ's name, may this little hunch on his back start moving down and be made well. In Christ's name, amen. Look here, son. You're an impossible case for the doctor. You know that. He can't do nothing for you. But will you believe me as God's servant? I'll prove something. When you go in tonight, you take a string and measure it around your little waist like this here, and put it together and then cut it off. And tomorrow night before the service, you go get that same string and measure it again around you and cut off how much you shrunk around this way by tomorrow night and lay it on my desk. Will you do that? All right. Go now. You believe God will heal my brother. Oh God, I pray in Christ's name that you will heal this man and make him well. Through Jesus' name. God bless you, my brother. You believe it? I should have never had the first discernment. It makes everybody want it, you see. And we, I can't do it and have this line through here. All right, brother. You believe God will make you well? You believe I'll pray for you that something's here now that you realize it's Christ? Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this man and make him well. Heal him, dear God. And I lay my hands upon him and bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Go believing now. Blessed are they who have never seen it yet believe. Do you believe, brother, that God will make you well with all your heart? So, oh, Jesus, Son of God, I lay hands upon the man, and I pray that you will heal him and make him well. As I bless this poor dear man, God give to him the soundness of his health for the glory of God. In Jesus' name I ask this. All right, brother, go believe him now. Don't doubt, but believe how do you do, sister? I believe you're the little lady that accepted Christ. Said, what do you want me to heal you on? You want God to heal you then? Conditions? Yeah. This is a little Catholic girl, a French Canadian Catholic. You give her a life to Christ, and that's the first meeting of mine she's ever been. She's nervous now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we realize that this little lady has a great thing facing her, Your Honor. She's got to come against a wall of opposition. She left two little children, she said, at home. They were just getting up with the measles. Oh, God, but faith struck her little heart. She was determined. She wanted to see Jesus. She's like the Queen of Sheba. She's going to see if it was right. You saved her, Lord. And I'm standing here now, and she's in your presence, and I'm in your presence. And she feels it and knows that you're here. I bless this woman. May she return to her home happy. May all of her diseases and the children all be well. May she live a happy, peaceful life and lead all of her loved ones to the Lord Jesus. I bless her in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, little lady. Go and receive what you've asked for. I hope to see you in Dawson Creek. Edmonton, Edmonton. God bless you. I believe you're her husband. Or your sister. I mean, you're talking about the rest of her. What's your trouble? Oh, pain in the side and in your back. You were farming in French Canadian Catholic too? God's good, isn't he? Oh, dear Jesus, this little man has drove a long way. He's come through many hard trials. He's walked in the platform here tonight with his sister. And he wants to be healed. He's a pain in his side and something wrong in his back. And as this group of believers make their way back across to British Columbia or wherever they're from, may the wheels of this automobile hum a song in the praises of God rising from that car as they go along with the joy of God. May all their sicknesses be gone. May our brother be healed. Give testimony to the glory of God. We ask it in Jesus' name as I bless him for this purpose. Amen. God bless you, my little brother. I want to see you over there really on fire for God. You know my buddy Chris Burke? 
He shares something with him immediately in the morning. That's good. That's fine. All right. God bless you, my brother. What do you want God to give you up? Oh, God bless you, my dear brother. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ come to this man now, making him completely well, healing him of all his infirmities, and making him completely whole. I bless him for his healing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. I believe it'll be over, don't you? That's mighty fine. Look into the chat. You love Jesus? Now, Jesus was sure he'd lay his hands on you. You'd get wet. But Jesus went up into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit there. And that's what you see moving tonight in the building. Now, Brother Brandon comes to pray for you. You believe Jesus is going to make you well? Dear Heavenly Father, I bless this handsome looking little boy standing here. Bronco Asma. Oh, Satan, you'd have to be cruel to afflict a little child. Now leave the child, I adjure thee by Christ, the Son of God, that you come from him. And may this asthma leave him never return no more. Amen. Bless you, honey. I believe it'll all be gone. You won't have it. God bless you, sir. You believe that too? That's very fine. Let us hear from the little boy. All right, sister. You believe it, God will make you well, now? Blessed God, as this church of the living God here tonight, hundreds of people praying at this time. We together are uniting our prayers for this sick people. It's somebody's mother, it's somebody's daughter, it's somebody in need. I pray that you heal her, Lord, as I bless her with my hands up on her. For the Bible has said this, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. We believe it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. You believe it, sister dear? I with all my heart. God be you. you believe, my brother? Believe it, God will make you well. Just look at the people here praying for you. Those people are all praying. I'm just one praying for you. They all am praying for you. Christ is here. You're in his head. He knows you. He loves you. He wants you to be well. Oh Jesus, as this dear man comes. See them come, Lord, with a sincere look in their face. They're wanting to get relieved, Lord. Maybe the doctors tried hard, and God, we thank you for him. But maybe he couldn't help them. And they're coming up to the great doctor of doctors, the great physician. And with the prayer of faith, he promised would heal the sick. And this I pray for my brother with all my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brother. Now go and get well. Now you believe with all your heart? And dear Heavenly Father, as this young man stands and I hold his hand, as in making a contact to him, saying they shall lay their hands on the sick, I ask with this prayer of faith that you'll heal the man and may he go from here tonight rejoicing and knowing that he's met exactly what God said and may his faith reach over and take a hold of it while he's here in the shadow of the cross. We ask in Jesus' name. You believe it's over, brother, and you'll be well. God bless you. Man. All right, sister. You believe it, he'll make you well, sister dear. Now look, you're the one that's sick. God's the one that's here. He has, he's done, purchased your healing. Now you just look and believe it. And then, that curvature will leave and the ulcer will go and you'll be made well. You believe that? Blessed Father, as this little woman stands here and knows there's nothing in the medical room or surgery can help this curvature, neither can it this ulcers, but thou can, Lord. I bring her in the shadows of the cross in the name of Jesus Christ with this prayer of faith I offer for her for her healing. Amen. Now, sister, here's the way to accept it. I'm in the presence of God. The prayer of faith has been said. If others can be healed, I am too. Thank you, Lord. It's over. And I'll never let nothing else come between that. We get away. God bless you. All right, sister. What do you want to be healed of? You believe it, he'll do it? Oh, blessed Lord, as this woman comes along while this great church is praying, ministers of the gospel, faithful women, all praying, and we are asking you in the name of Jesus Christ to heal this woman. Receive our prayer of faith, Lord, that she might be made well. Through Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. Is it a finished thing for you? You believe that you're going to be well? God bless you, sister. All right, my brother. You 
देविका रूप में क्यों है ओ लॉ मा ब्लेस मी किंग आ ब्लेस दिस मैन इन क्राइस नेम आ प्रे दैट यू आर हीलिंग एंड मेकिंग वेल मे इट बी अ फिनिश थिंग फ्रॉम राइट नाउ मे ही रियलाइज दैट द वेरी गॉड हु मेड हेवेंस एंड अर्थ हैज सेंट हिज सन टू डाई फॉर दिस पर्पस एंड ही क्लेम विद हिज ग्रेट प्रॉमिस दैट द थिंग्स दैट आई डू शुड यू आल्सो द लास्ट वर्ड्स दैट कम फ्रॉम हिज माउथ सेड दीस साइंस ऑफ फॉलो देम एंड बिलीव इफ दे लेड देयर हैंड्स ऑन द सिक दे विल गेट वेल we believe it and ask it in Jesus name amen god bless you brother god bless you brother. yours brother do you believe in god for you my brother oh god is this fine man stands here looks big and healthy but the devil's no respect he tackles the strong as same as the weak and now that he is is striking him. oh i pray father that somehow that down from the shadows of the cross here As I noticed him while I was preaching, seeing, taking in those words, I pray that this will be the night that the diabetes will start leaving his body, and soon he'll be pronounced totally well. Grant it, Father, in Jesus' name. I offer this prayer of faith for him. Amen. Bless you, my dear. God bless you, brother. Dear. We believe that he'll make you well. Oh, dear God, as this. Brother, looks me into the faces that I absolutely believe that Jesus Christ will be. I pray now and bless Him in that wonderful, all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus, and ask that His divine presence, who is now here watching this prayer line as they're coming through, may He be healed as I offer this prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Consider it finished. You go rejoice. Little girl. I don't say that she will receive her conditions here. Are you her father? Are you a Christian? Do you believe that he will do it? Yes, you do. Does the audience believe that this little mute will be healed? Now remember, I'm not asking God for miracles. No, if he desires to do that, all right. If he will come to this audience... And take do the things that he's done. That's a miracle. I'm convinced that he's here. Don't you think? But the reason I'm asking these little children to be seen, they're too little to have faith for themselves. And if they can just get one little, when Elijah sent Gehazi up and he looked for the cloud, he said, "I see one about the size of a hand of a man." He said, "I hear the sound of abundance of rain." If God will just give this little, I notice the deaf woman out there now with her head You hear me all right, my sister? You ought to wave your hand. There she is. Sitting right here on the front line. A while ago, dead. Now we're here. See, we thank God for that. Now, let's just just ask that we can find favor with Jesus. I'm going to ask you something. You're trying, and you're loving, and your prayers are doing just as much as my prayers. It's your Father and my Father, and we're praying. Let's pray for this little girl. I'm going to put my hands over her now and here, and ask for His blessing. Now that truly, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is. Hard to even battle the lion line somehow to keep those discernments down, but I'm trying to get the line through. It is getting late. And let's just bow our heads and be real reverent. What if this was your little girl, your little sister? I'd be real reverent. Ah, uh, brother, I don't know that he will do it. Whether he does or not, we'll believe it anyhow, won't we? Let me have the chance. Now, precious Lord, this dear, sweet little. Darling, standing here with her little brown eyes looking up to her little sandy hair, a beautiful little thing. Maybe someday be the wife of some little minister, if you care. But the devil has done evil. He's took this condition and placed it up on her. And I pray that you'll heal her. Oh God, to encourage the heart of the father. And to encourage the child, will you just give her her healing just a little now, Lord? That they'll see that the sign of the cloud is there. That you're doing it. The child in this condition, never being able to hear anything, it's we know that she won't know what to do with it. But the father will instruct her. And now, with my hands over this child's ears, commissioned by an angel of God. I adjure the deaf mute spirit to leave the child in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I want every head bowed, every eye closed to be in prayer just in the I just want to check the child to see what our Lord has done. Now be sure, keep your heads back, or the Spirit might come to you. Yeah. 